Good afternoon, you're here with me in my gallery in Basel and we're now discussing in a second tour ancient repairs, repairs from antiquity and repairs which have been done since the 17th, 18th century until now. Now here we are standing uh, together with a beautiful torso of a young man in a, showing a twist. It's the so-called Ganymede type of the famous example in Naples in the museum and when I bought it I didn't know how it looked with the 19th century repairs. Typical 19th century repairs as I showed already last time are things done like these noses done in marble and then attached to a smooth surface after they took off the brake and smoothed it. They would attach a nose somewhere and um, this is a technique which stopped at the end of the 19th century to repla be replaced more by plaster and eventually being taken off after the Second World War in a form of new purism. All these ancient repairs were taken off, like most famous example, the Egineten in Munich, where they took all the restorations of Torwaldsen in the 60s down and uh, very much to the advantage of these fantastic sculptures in Munich. But in a new historical approach today, you would probably leave them on the Egineten and it would look pretty horrible. Now here, obviously this piece was over-restored. You have this youthful young man in a twist. Um, it was called the Ganymede type because of this parallel and um, I believe it's not a wrong interpretation because when you look at the body, it's a very youngish, nearly a boy with the genitals very small. Then you have a very strong muscular upper torso. And then at the back, you will see afterwards a very feminine back. So it's an odd combination. You may say no, but that's how I read the piece. It's a very twisted, elegant, beautifully done in the surface sculpture from the Antonine period, so in the second century AD. Um, the marble shows the patina of an old collection with a lot of waxing. We didn't touch that. And it shows a pretty large number of repairs. Uh, in the front, for example, here, the genitals were, the break was smoothed off. You still have the remains of a hole and a new little uh, thing was attached in marble, probably in the 18th or 19th century. Here it was smoothed down carefully and the head attached, leaving a huge hole. Here at the side you do have here iron rods still sticking in it with lead but these could be even repairs from antiquity. We don't know that because also the Romans repaired their sculptures and they used even glue and very often they used exactly this technique of iron with lead combined. So it's not always easy to read a historical repair. When we are not sure it's Roman, we tend to write historical repairs, which is a proof of provenance, a proof of a very old collecting history, which is in most cases unfortunately lost, which is annoying, as we need to have provenances. And these are, of course, the best proof of an old provenance without written document. And let me remind you that in the UNESCO Convention, they said inherit evidence and not written documents. But since we are so many lawyers, everybody thinks in a document as a proof, whereas these repairs are the best proof of old collecting history. Now, when I bought the piece, to my great surprise and very kindly, a colleague of ours informed me from the auction house that they found old archival material, which they didn't know at the time. And it is, we have a photograph from the early 30s of Paul Arndt. Paul Arndt was a famous German archaeologist in Tübingen and he had a huge photographical archive. So he knew the piece and it shows all these big attachments of Ganymede. You had here on this side, excuse me, you had a huge eagle trying to attack or to grab or making love to this youthful man and to Ganymede. And here you see these holes where the eagle was attached and they smoothed down the breaks of the arms. They were attached 
So these are here probably repairs from the 18th of 19th century with a rod going in for the metal, which was then fixed with lead. And here you still have the lead inside and it was uh, brutally taken off and cracked off the marble here. Whereas the eagle was attached, you have here a hole, which is poorly restored with some plaster. So it's a rather recent repair filling. Whereas here, for example, you have an extremely smooth piece of marble, which was inset. In fact, it's exactly the same technique as this 18th or 19th century nose, with still the glue sticking at the back. Here, they did the same. They smoothed out the hole and put the piece in marble in. When we go to the back, it is the same story. In the front, they took care to take the same marble. In the back, they found a different piece of marble which they attached here to the shoulder. I didn't touch the piece at all. So you see the breaks here are rather crudely filled up, but this is beautifully done by a very good sculptor with all the muscular structure. These kind of repairs we know very well from Rome by Cavaceppi, who had a big workshop with more than 20 people doing only that. All the agents coming to, you, to Rome, trying to find sculptures for royaldom and princesses, and Cavaceppi was repairing them uh, before they left Rome. So he was a famous sculptor but, and restored, but he was of course not the only one. Interesting enough, um, we discovered after the exquisition here an inscription which is again a historical inscription, so it's not an inscription from antiquity, A, V, and then I have difficulties reading it. It reminds you of these historic, historical graffiti left on the lines of Venice coming from Delos. This is typical, they would leave that on any antiquity since the late medieval time. Here another beautifully done clasp which was filled up and this is an exquisite work of restoration in the same, virtually same marble, it, extremely well done to cover up a hole created by a missing clamp. Last but not least, we have this odd end, the bottom here, they were simply, they cut off and you see here a typical 18th or 19th century repair. This is clear, that's a surface which is historically where they would add the lower part of the sculpture through a good sculptor, because this is done extremely carefully, the, what you would call in architecture an anatyrosis. It's to stick the missing bit to it. So here we have a beautiful sculpture where the history is partially lost because they took it off after the war, obviously, all the reconstruction, and now we are left with really the antiquity, most of it. And what you see is an extremely smooth back and what I mentioned before, if you had only this fragment, you would probably think it's a feminine back and not a masculine back, whereas this part here is clearly masculine. So the sculptor managed very well to catch the history of Ganymede and Zeus or Jupiter. Thank you very much.